present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. 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 Come well. Welcome. To Uncensored, Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of uh, Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And um, I have a feeling this stupid friggin' copy of Newsletter Censored that's rustling and making noise, hitting my shoulder, is going to be making noise throughout the whole damn video. It's always sticking out Don't there. Don't touch that. You turned it on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now it's off. It's always something. There's always something. Always something for me to get riled up about. Anyway, we're having a lovely day here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. The, uh, it is becoming more spring-like. It is the beginning of April 2015, Saturday afternoon. And uh, what's the date? I have no idea. Who the fuck cares? Let's see, 13, 12, it's probably the 11. All right. And uh, we are here. Uh, I'm here with my um, illustrious co-host and uh, mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in uh, 1977. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I was feeling all right, and now all of a sudden I had a, uh, a little, uh, like a uh, pinch nerve. But it seems to be gone now. Oh, good. Well, as long as you're comfortable. No, I'm not comfortable throwing a laying down. <laughs> not dead, of course, but you know. That's too comfortable. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so uh, for those that are new to the show, uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth is 100% uh, uh, unplanned, ad libbed, unrehearsed, non commercial, uh, uncensored, non commercial. No holds barred, progressive show. We 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 discuss um, any subject that is important to people and humanity. All right. I want to give a quick shout out and greetings to uh, my friend, uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Santangelo. Okay, he's from California originally. He lives in Kentucky. He runs a uh, very successful uh, uh, family-owned organic farm. Mm. He's an, uh, ap an apiary. He has mm. an apiary. Apiist. Is that the guy ap you put the banner up there with the drip and the honey? The one I, I, I wanted him to see. Is this there luck or something? Luck? Well, this uh, that the new type of beehive with the tap where you don't have yeah. to go into the hive and wear the suit and you know and do all that and smoke the bees to calm them down and all that jazz you have a tap you turn it on the honey comes uh, drips out into into the jar yeah that's an Australian invention that's a new invention and I showed it to Paul Terrace Wokowinski of Perth Australia and he seemed to like it and, and uh, Stephen Santangelo who who uh, sells uh, organic honey from his farm uh, I thought it would be of great interest to somebody like him because it's a lot of work to and the procedure that you have to go through to collect honey. And, this, and don't forget, you're also stealing from the bee because that's their food too. Well, that was my next question. Mm -hmm. I hope <coughs> that this new type of easy access hive will allow enough honey to re and pollen whatever to remain in the hive to sustain the bees so yeah. they will have enough to eat in order to flourish in order to thrive uh, yeah. that's my concern yes but and when the bee commercialism is involved you know what happens well they cut off their nose to spite their face the it's like over f commercial fishermen over over fishing the waters and then all of a sudden 
gee, we don't have uh, too many too many striped bass anymore. You know, mm -hmm. we're gonna have they're endangered, and you know, we have to restrict fishing of them. They farm fish, trout, and uh, salmon in Norway. I'm I'm against uh, uh, farming. Feeding them grain. You see, see, it's disgusting. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Not one bit. No, for for a good reason. Now. Shout out to Steven Santangelo. Greetings, my friend. He also sells a uh, very uh, a nice uh, uh, physical fitness equipment, you know, resistant bands uh, that are very high quality. Um, professional uh, 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 issue. A very high quality resistant band, so uh, hmm. I will mention more of that in the future. I want to give a shout out to uh, my good friend, uh, former WWE star and personal trainer extraordinaire in Boca Raton, Florida, Mr. Ken Thiessen, KT Training to Win, Akari USA. I want to uh, say hello to my very near and dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, Miho. And I want to give a shout out to all of my Facebook group administrators, Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins. Anthony Laura, uh, uh, Justin Dana Spears, and Jean-Luc Odon. Okay, greetings to all of you. Um, I want to start by talking about um, asking you if you've read the article or have heard of these um, 11 healthcare professionals that are coming back to the United States from Africa that have Ebola. Ah! And uh, instead of the government, the U.S. government, instead of putting them in quarantine in Washington, in a quarantine um, medical facility, they're putting them up in uh, uh, very, uh, nearby hotels near the hospital, which means they will be exposed to the public not a very irresponsible and very foolish decision if that's the case because unless maybe uh maybe the u.s government in cahoots with monsanto who's working on a an ebola vaccine maybe they wish a new pandemic to take place so that uh, monsanto can make another killing off of ebola do they have symptoms yeah, they have Ebola. Why the hell are they being put in hotels near the hospital? Because they came from an area where Ebola was, but that doesn't mean they have symptoms. You, but you know what Christy did to that nurse? She had no symptoms. She understood that well. And she told him to go fuck himself. She was very and, irate. Well, yeah, well, you know. He wanted to take away her freedom when she was asymptomatic asymptomatic you know what I mean um, so maybe they are I don't know I didn't I didn't hear that story okay I didn't um, hear it at all now my next um, monologue my next series of, uh, of statements is tied into our new series capitalism in a conch shell and uh, I would say our ultimate douchebag award, <laughs> but it's capitalism in a conch shell. You got a Chisler's Hall of Fame, now you got a douchebag award? Well, Chisler's Hall of Shame is usually consumer related. Business, yeah. When the consumer gets screwed. Well, who's the douchebag? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I am glad you asked. Let's start with, um, well, before we get on to the douchebags, <laughs> you know, um, from what I understand, the man who filmed uh, Eric Garner's death is still fighting to get out of jail. Why isn't why isn't Governor Andrew Cuomo stepping in and re having him released from jail a long time ago? Because they'll paint Mr. Andrew Cuomo as a hater of the cops. But the cop killed 
Eric Gardner. Unnecessary roughness. What about the cop the other day who shoots the guy running away in the back? They you have think his, he's going to get prosecuted? They have his picture all over the internet. She, yes, the chief said it, the video sickened him. But I can guarantee you almost 99% and he's going to get away. Unarmed uh, gentleman was running away, fleeing. For a traffic stop. Holy Eric Garner was selling loose cigarettes. These are not death penalty issues. Big deal. He was selling cigarettes. And they're dead. All he needed, Eric Garner, all he needed was a warning to, yeah. to stop selling the cigarettes on the street, not to be choked out to death. The poor guy had asthma. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, why is, why are our hero uh, whistleblowers being persecuted so much? Like, like Because Ed of Obama. Edward Snowden, uh, who did his job at, at protecting and defending the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and, and domestic. Domestic. And now the whistleblower, well, they're not professional whistleblowers, but people who, who video uh, bad Facts, things yeah. happening, bad things happening. Yeah. They're, be, they're sure being persecuted. Now, you said something about Obama. Well, Obama, has, under Obama, uh, he has gotten these strict laws against whistleblowers. But whistleblowing is a heroic deed. <laughs> or wise. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now, um, before I get on to m talking about douchebags. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, U.S. hospitals, American hospitals, charge $800 for an IV bag of simple salt water that costs them only one dollar. Now, that shows you where the American health care system is at. It's oh, a how about ten dollars for an aspirin. It's a racket. It's a, it's a racket, yes it is. It's racketeering. That's exactly what but it is. But when Medicare says we don't want to pay that much for it, they don't like that. Why are the insurance companies paying the eight hundred dollars for an IV bag? Because they get they they get it from you. They just turn around instead of arguing with the 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 hospital the greedy, hold on the greedy evil, hospital CEOs like all American CEOs in corporate corporate American CEOs are demons. Instead of saying no, we're not going to pay eight hundred dollars for a bag of salt water. They a, pass it on. A bag of brine is what it is. Yeah. Where, Saline. Where you can make corned beef. You put brisket in the bag of brine with some spices, and you got corned beef. Right. They don't. They don't question it. They don't contest it. They just turn around and sock it to you. The exactly. They contest you, don't they? Right, the little ah, guy. The little you, guy gets fucked again in the in the capitalist system that we have with the two-party system. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, Democrat. Um, you know, every week that goes by, I hear about Democrats selling out the people. I hear it all the time. Uh, you know. Uh, um, it's, it's incredible, you know. It's, it, it, people will have to stop thinking that the Democratic Party is the party of FDR. They have to stop this because it's not the case. Yeah, the crumbs are getting smaller and smaller. The crumbs that you get from Democrats are getting fewer and fewer. Yeah. It used to be a handful of crumbs. Yeah, you ain't got enough now to, uh, yeah. to, to even uh, follow Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, like during uh, uh, like J um, John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Baines Johnson, you got a handful of crumbs. Jimmy Carter, you got maybe a half a handful of crumbs, or not even that. Now you get a few cr a few crumbs, maybe three of them. Microscopic. Yeah, you need an electron. Nano. Nano crumbs. <laughs> Nano crumbs. Hey, yes. let's coin it. Let's coin it. Coined. Nano crumbs. Hereby coined on his show, the nano crumbs of today's sellout Democrats. Mm. Nano crumbs. 
You heard it. You it's heard it first. here first. It's a first. So, forget it. They're corporatists. They're, they're, they're completely sold out to uh, the people of, uh, the soldiers of Satan. <laughs> you notice with capitalism, and I got to hold up the conch show. With capitalism today, just think about it. Today's media, which is not the liberal media, today's media lies to you. The politicians of the two-party system lie to you. Uh, uh, all the pastors that are in the spotlight mm. lie to you. Uh, the government lies to you. Advertisement in from corporate America lies to you. Mm -hmm. And who uh, who's the father of all lies? Satan. You see how you see a pattern here. There's a pattern here. Capitalism in a conch shell. There's uh, a pattern, sir. We did. Uh, Capitalism is only like uh, 200 years old or something like that. Really? How the hell did we ever get along without it for thousands of years? Oh, wow. How did we? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, ever since, yeah, 200 years and then later Adam on. Adam Smith. And then later on, Ayn Rand really promoted the hell out of it back in the, uh, what, late 50s? 50s. Early 60s? 50s. 50s mostly. Cause she she didn't look like a young spring chicken when she was on the talk show in like sixty early sixties. No, she, she never looked like a young spring chicken. She's she like a witch, man. Okay. She, she was, was a, a witch. She was Medusa, the gorgon with the snake. She was a witch. She was a gorgon. Okay. Okay. On to the douchebags. Ah. Let me get my shillelagh. My blackthorn shillelagh. Douchebag number one. I don't know if this guy is, is a, a full-fledged douchebag because he he was very honest in his statement. Uh -oh. uh, the De Beers Diamond Mine chairman, Nicky Oppenheimer, made a statement. Uh, not recently, but he made a statement. Nonetheless, diamonds are intrinsically worthless. So that means my uh, my hunch was correct all this time about the big fine jewelry retail scam with all the uh, a pushy obnoxious and very annoying commercials from K jewelers Jared uh, um, the list goes on and on about the diamond engagement ring racket costing thousands of dollars for the poor suckers for the men and the women that make them feel guilty if they don't buy it they don't buy fine jewelry. The truth is, there are so many diamonds in South Africa that they are deliberately controlling the exportation of these mine diamonds just to keep the diamond artif uh, artificially at a decent price, a, at a high price, so they can call it a precious gem. But in reality, diamonds are not a precious gem stone. Well. Anything, so it's a racket. anything can become a precious stone, or what we would call money today. Availability. It, yeah. Uh, it was uh, cowrie shells at one time. Yeah. You know, I mean. Uh, Porcelain. Right now. Was was like money in China. There, at well, one there time. you go. Porcelain. Yeah. Now, um, the silver right now is below its production cost. Right. In other words, it's worth nothing. It's How like they a, expect it to go. It's like know, a game. Up. It's like a big game. That's what it is. I mean, gold is where today? But gold was $35 an ounce at one time. Yeah, well, gold, precious metals, you know? supposed precious metals, uh, usually they go up in price when, when something negative or bad happens in the world. It's yeah, a hedge. But the it's point a hedge. Of, yeah, yeah, but the point, of the, the point of it is you have to determine that something is worth something. To be something. Right. Gold. You don't have to say gold. It could be a cowrie shell. It, be, it could be a clam shell. It, has it to could be, be a conch. It has to be internationally determined 
Well, it don't even because the calorie shell was uh, in, in in like Samoa or something. Yeah. And it was past me, so it wasn't over here, but it could be I'm mother saying, of could pearl. Be anything. Mother of pearl shell. It could be yeah, it could be anything. It could be anything. I mean the uh the a, um, a, a regular pearl that you find in the stupid uh, oyster or whatever the hell. Well now they're farm raised. If they're farm raised they're worth nothing. Now they're a dime. But if you find them in there they're they're worth something. Now they're a dime a dozen. Yeah. Well, pearls uh, before farm raising aquaculture used to be very, very valuable. Yes. Now they're farm raised. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, um, you know, it's all a matter of the system. Say. It's all a matter of the setup. Oh. You don't have to have capitalism in a conch shell. You can have it in something else. Yeah. Hey, if you want that. Did you know the word wampum came from the there you go from the uh, New England, the New England. Native Americans actually used some of the clam shells as as money. The wampum, there you go. The uh, the quahogs, the chowder clams. Twenty four dollars worth of wampum buys a uh, 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 New York island. The ones with uh, purple inside. Oh yeah, the Indians were totally ripped yeah. off by selling Manhattan. But what I'm saying is, it's a game. It's like the stock it's market. A it's a game. It's monopoly. You do, you make certain rules. Yeah. And that's it. It's controlled. Yeah. It's rigged. Okay. Now for a couple of real douchebags. Ooh. I mean, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> they're definitely out there. Um, Arizona Senator Sylvia Allen says church attendance <coughs> should be mandatory. Since when does going to a building with a pastor in it all dressed up? Once or twice a week. Since when does that make you a real Christian? It doesn't. <laughs> it oh, does Republican senator, by the way. Well, of course. Yeah. You think a Democrat would say something like that? Oh, it's it's totally uh, before anybody says anything about their religion and their church and etc. They have to prove that their God exists. Before, right, right. Okay? Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Thessalonians 5, 21. It's right there in the Bible. And the Bible no, does not mention any form of punishment for gay people. Well, it did once. At one time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um... Yeah, Tom DeLay made a real douchebag. Tom DeLay or Tim? W who's the uh, right winger? Both of them. The DeLay, are they brothers? No. Oh, they're not related. Oh, wait a minute. It's, it's Tim LaHaye. Oh, LaHaye. Oh, oh, oh. Tim DeLay. Yeah, well, of course, you know, uh, 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 they're, they're, for some strange reason, they're really, really preoccupied with gays and gay marriage. Oh, Lord, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, what about the other sins? Like uh, 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 the Bible is not too, not too keen on divorce, uh, uh, adultery, and all, the, and a lot of other things. I mean, uh, well, you don't even have to go that far. No, you don't. What about pride? They oh. are being prideful, aren't they, when they were saying, "Our religion is better than yours." Our, our God is stronger than yours. What is that? Pride. When the when the rich, when the elitists say take possession of the planet Earth and say our this and our that, it's it's part of the mentality that because they have more uh, much more uh, material gain than you do, they they feel they're better than you. Yes. The Pharisees and the Sadducees felt that way too, back when Jesus was yeah going around. See the point yeah. is these. All they the like to be seen of men praying and in the best seats in the synagogue. Yeah. You know. I mean, all these conservatives in the spotlight, whether they be um, uh, pastors, TV evangelists, uh, or or politicians, career politicians, uh, liars for hire. <laughs> uh, they should work on 
themselves and worry about uh, worry about saving their own very sinful natured souls than to be sticking their long Pinocchio nose into other people's private lives. No, they don't worry about the beam in their own eye. They worry about the little sliver in yours. So they throw stones in glass houses. Oh, ho, ho, do they? Okay. All right, on to the final douchebag. Final? No, no, no. There will be many more. Uh, we'll bring them up. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame. And, and, and look, in honor of, of, uh, of Sean Morrison. Greetings to Sean Morrison. Greetings. Greetings. Shame. 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 He likes to say that. Shame, shame, shame to the newest sellout Democrat, mm -mm. Governor of California, Jerry Brown, at, when he made the statement, some people have a right to more... To more, more of a right. Some people have more of a right yeah. or the right to more water than others. That's correct, yes. Which means... That means Nestle. That means... That means the frackers. That... They're, they're, in a way, they're like playing God. They're taking a natural resource that is, is vital to life itself on this planet, mm -hmm. that living creatures have been partaking in since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. and now they're saying, I have more of a right to drink water than you. This person no, has more of a right. Than, huh? Nestle's wants to bottle it. The frackers need to use so, it to get the oil out. So, so, what, so when I was saying a while back that with this um, California drought that seems to be connected to climate change, right? Uh, something to something. Yeah, this California, this long-term devastating California drought, mm -hmm. which is only leaving California with a, one more year of fresh water, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, not counting the fact of whether or not they do desalinization. De Too expensive. They are rationing the water for the common folk, but allowing Nestle's, with his the evil douchebag of all time, Peter Brabeck, uh, CEO, and the, the companies that are fracking, to continue mm. supposedly limited rationed California fresh water. Well, of course. Otherwise, where would their campaign money come from? And this is the, the moonbeam so-called progressive liberal Democrat from way back, Jerry Brown. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see a pattern here? Jerry Brown sells out. Hillary Clinton sells out to Monsanto. Uh, many Democrats are choosing corporations over the mainstream, their voters, the little guy. Yeah. So forget uh, forget about the the progressive liberal a Democrat. You're not going to find it there anymore. You got to go to an independent like Bernie Sanders. You know. So uh, um, you know, and, and Elizabeth Warren, she's a good egg. She's a good egg, but she's she's too gentle. She's too kind. Like uh, she'll she'll use the term my Republican colleagues, or she'll. Um, Instead of saving, talking about the rich, you know, uh, she said the word fannies instead of ass. You know, she, she, she's too kind. Too diplomatic when it comes to demons. There you go. There you go. Demons. The enemy. Because the, the Democrats, for all their flaws and, and uh, problems and etc., they have an idea and respect the art of governing, whereas the Republicans do not. Well, they still think they can negotiate with the Republicans. That's correct. These people have no intention of meeting a, a Democrats halfway and compromising. They have no intention. It's their way or the highway. And they will not compromise with you. No. It, uh, hey, can you compromise with terrorists? Can you compromise with hardened criminals? You can't compromise with evil, else you become just like the evil poison.
if you comp do it. if you compromise with a serial killer and ah. say, and the serial killer you know was all dressed up with a big smile on his face clean shaven and he says you know what I've seen the light I agree with you I'm gonna change my ways you think that if you let him go he's gonna stop doing what he was doing before or if he was a pedophile or a pedophile killer or murderer or something you think just by 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 talk which is cheap and him negotiating with you and, and saying yes to you and agreeing with you you think it's gonna change you can't change evil not if he's a sociopath because he will just say what he has to to get out of the problem yeah a sociopath right. which is very common with uh, conservatives like Dick Cheney with politicians yeah yeah Dick Cheney the uh, dicker. Right. Uh, uh, maybe, possibly. I think Dick Cheney kind of like bossed around G.W. Bush. He was the president. In reality, man. In reality, yes. Yes. Just like under Reagan, uh, the, uh, what, I, I forget his name. But he used to stand by Reagan when Reagan was making a speech somewhere or something. And he would tell Reagan things he was saying. Uh, you got to hurry up here. We got we, we got to get going. He was in charge, not Reagan. Okay. Right. Go, Mister Garbage, tear down this wall. And then you have, um, of course, I won't even mention because it's a waste of time. All the flag waving teabagger, uh, you know, gun nuts out there that 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 are really brain cell deficient. It doesn't even pay to to talk about them. But uh, because they're idiots, really. Um, the um, anyway, um, <laughs> I was going to mention you something. But I, I gotta you mention do eat ice cream. You have a brain freeze. No, uh, I, I don't have the man's name written down. Uh -oh. So it's not fair to bring it up. But uh, uh, a gentleman uh, th uh, that. Um, uh, had several popular books out on uh, um, exposing the truth about 9/11. Was found uh. mur murdered. Him and his his two lovely young younger children, his daughter and his son, and the family dog. All four of them were found murdered, and they said it looks like a CIA yeah. hit. Yeah, of course. They called it black ops. Yes. Well, now one of your I believe it was on your group, uh, one of the uh, gentlemen that you have involved there. Yeah. Somebody had mentioned something about uh, 911 and uh, uh, I guess a video or something that sort of exposes uh, the truths and stuff like that. And of course he was. Oh, yes, yeah, believe that. You truly believe that stuff. That our government wouldn't we're, lie to us. We'll never kill 3,000 pe innocent 3, people. 3,000 yeah. of our people, yeah. Well, what do you think Barbara Walters said to Jesse Ventura when he was on Same The View? Thing. Same thing. Not only him, but that idiot on... Uh, Hassel douche? Uh, on Fox knows the guy. The guy on Fox News who doesn't like uh, uh, Ventura either and got into him with uh, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, the Navy SEAL crap, all and Kyle. Oh, about uh, Mr. Kyle. Yeah. yeah, Kyle. Kyle did not knock out Jesse Ventura or punch or punch him. You know, right in the bar. That that was what the lawsuit was really about, right? Oh, that was his lawsuit. Yes. But Jesse Ventura goes on into detail that Kyle is a is a liar. A, embellishes a lot he exaggerates he was a liar he's a liar yeah a liar anyway you see this it's a siphon everything you've learned about trickle-down economics whether it came from Reagan or not is a lie it was all a lie we actually have siphon up to the top one or twenty percent economics the devil's economics yeah. capitalism in is the, the in the conch Shell, look my fucking con in a conch shell. Capitalism is the devil's economics. We've proved it many times on this show. Now let us sink our teeth into these readings. Sink them, brother. Sink them. Our piranha teeth. I used to have a pet yeah. piranha. 
Oh my god, a pet piranha. Come on. What the hell did I call him? Captain Blood. Hmm. Because uh, I started out with a small school and uh, they ate each other even though, <laughs> even though I fed them very well. Uh, you see, piranhas, they tolerate one another. They, they, uh, well, how the hell do they, they fall, fly, you know, float around in schools? They, they, they feed in schools because... Uh, well, it's it's in the wild. It's every piranha for himself. Yeah, but they're in the big school. Whenever you see them eating up a guy, that falls well, into the water. Well, that's or because there's plenty of room for them to spread out and not. Uh, maybe maybe in an aquarium, it's territorial situation. It's, they feel they feel. But why would why would they start eating one another if I f after I fed them? A very healthy meal. I mean, a very ample mm -hmm. size uh, uh, meal, and they would eat each other. Not, nevertheless, I mean, they would they would they would take bites out of one another. They're yeah. tank mates. Eventually, I had one left, yeah. which I assume was the toughest, was the alpha. Yeah. And I called him Captain Blood, and he used to let me pet him and everything. Oh my you know, God. He bo I bonded with my piranha. Oh my God. Yeah, believe it or not, but I, I, I gave him, I didn't give him live food like the pet shop says, oh, you got to get live food, you got to buy live goldfish. No, no, it's a bullshit. It's retail bullshit. I used to give my piranha cheap uh, goldfish pellets, you know, koi pellets that you throw pond fish. I gave him, uh, I used to make um, a very lean meatballs, raw meatballs. Oh, you think? Yeah. yeah. Somebody put up a... Uh a video yesterday on Facebook. These two ducks were feeding from troughs that someone put on the edge of uh, water so that they could dip in and free feed. Yeah. And all these koi were coming around them and everything and the ducks were taking the food and feeding it to the koi. <laughs> I saw that as cute, man. Yeah, I that. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, Amazing! That was really cute. Animals are well. Ducks. Ducks are nice. Are very nice animals. They're they're not stupid at all. I mean, I I've hand fed a wild mallard uh, duck many many times. I she gently took. It was her and the male was right behind her, and she just gently tilted her head and took the the plantain chip out of my fingers. <laughs> Right from my fingers, took it, you know, slowly turned her head, and I, used, I hand fed her, you know, so. In the 1970s, we suffered through stagflation. High inflation, soaring unemployment, stagnant economic growth. Pretty much the worst of all worlds. Today, we have nearly opposite conditions which should, in theory, make for the best of all worlds, low inflation, falling unemployment, and reasonably steady economic growth. Yet, somehow, today's economy feels pretty shabby. Truth to say the least. The crucial missing component of good news today, of course, is wages. Wage and salary growth have been pitifully slow in an economic expansion almost at its sixth birthday. And compensation still has not recovered the ground lost during the Great Recession. The most recent data available show that the median U.S. household still earns less than its counterpart did at the turn of the century after adjusting for inflation, of course. But there are signs we may finally be turning a corner. You may have to squint to see them, but they are there. In the otherwise mediocre March jobs report, in surveys about compensation expectations and in tangible wage gains at the bottom of the income distribution. Last week's jobs report was mostly disappointing, as it revealed the nation's employers broke their year-long streak 
of adding at least 200,000 jobs per month. Buried in the report was some encouraging news about earnings. In March, average hourly earnings for private employees rose seven cents, mm -hmm. or about 0 0.3 percent to 24,000, no, excuse me, $24.86. Sure, it's not much, but it's more than analysts forecast. Other recent Labor Department releases have also shown compensation quietly rising. These reports may be a harbinger of far bigger raises to come. In surveys, consumers and employers have become increasingly likely to say they expect compensation to rise in the coming months. In the Conference Board's Consumer Confidence Survey, consumers are asked whether they expect their income to be higher or lower six months from now. The net share expecting a raise has bounced around a bit from month to month, but tended upward for more than a year. As of March, the percentage saying they expected their income to rise was 8.5%. Higher than the percentage saying they expected it to fall. More than double the difference a year ago. You can see patterns in the National Federation of Independent Businesses monthly survey of small business owners. These numbers are also noisy from month to month, but they generally show that employers expect worker compensation to rise. Such expectations tend to be self-fulfilling. If both workers and their bosses start pay negotiations from the premise that wages are going to rise, then, well, wages are probably going to rise. Another sign that widespread wage increase are in the pipeline comes from the low-wage sector. Through both public policy initiatives and decisions made voluntarily by private companies, in the absence of a federal minimum wage increase in almost six years, some cities and states have decided to take matters into their own hands. In 2014 alone, 14 states and the District of Columbia decided to lift their wage floors. A handful of cities have raised or are in the process of raising their minimum wages to as much as Fifteen dollars an hour. What they do? Big deal. That's still below the standard of uh, the cost of living. Still below the cost of living. What's the uh, uh, projected federal poverty level for a family of three? Like like twenty thousand or something? A little over twenty thousand, I think. It might be eighteen for three, four for twenty. Something uh, well, like that. The, well, I don't know. The, something this, like this that. article said three, but. Still, still, I mean, you know, uh, $15 is way better than seven, seven, and, seven and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not enough. Yeah. But even without force to do so, a growing number of large, influential, low-wage corporations have also publicly pledged to give their workers raises. In February, Walmart announced that it would increase wages for 500,000 employees to at least $9 an hour. Big fucking deal. Wow, the Walton family wants to increase it that much to a whopping $9 an hour. Maybe, you know, like Henry Ford, maybe then if you increase their wages to $9 an hour, they can go into Walmart and buy stuff. They can buy their $10 jeans. They can afford their $10 jeans. <laughs> Denim. Less than a week later, the parent company, TJ Maxx, 
marshals, and home goods made a similar declaration. Soon Target followed, not and suit, and in suit as did McDonald's last week. At least for 90,000 workers employed at corporate-owned locations, though not those employed by its franchisees. To some extent, these announcements may be driven by a desire to cultivate goodwill in the face of much bad PR about treatment and compensation of low-wage workers. But the primary motivation for these firms, as with those smaller companies surveyed by the National Federation of Independent Business, is likely the bottom line. To attract and retain talent especially in the tightening labor market, employers know they need to start offering better pay. These actions could have knock-on effects throughout the economy, both by putting upward pressure on wages in more mid-level jobs and by filtering through to consumer prices. The whites of the nation's eyes, in other words, may be visible sooner than we realize. You can be sure the Federal Reserve is paying attention. Listen, if wages do not keep up with the cost of living, then the economy is not stimulated and will therefore suffer. Because people will, will have less and less and less surplus cash, less spending, money, surplus spending money to put back into the economy exactly. to the point where they tighten their belt so so hard, you know, where, where they can only afford to survive, barely, if they're lucky, then there is no money put into the economy to stimulate it. We are a consumer-driven economy. Mass production needs mass consumption. Mm, yeah. Well, it's well, almost, yeah. almost, almost three quarters. Hey, if you uh, of our economy if, is consumer driven. If you run a bakery or of your butcher or a fishmonger or whatever, and and you're not selling out your inventory in a timely fashion, then for, then you're going to lose money. You're going to go out of business. Uh, that's what happens. You know, that's what happens. <clears throat> Before I forget, um, uh, a a really King's King of uh, a, a a Republican uh -huh. uh, out in one of the um, Western states. I don't know if the article mentioned his name, his or her name, but there was a there was a Republican that is uh, pushing for a law that will restrict people on food stamps yes from buying steak from buying steak and seafood they, they want to prohibit people on food stamps from buying steak and seafood because I they told you they feel they feel I guess it's a big luxury for the poor I told you one of the things that drives Republicans against the poor is that they think they're getting something for nothing well wasn't it uh, Joni Ernst that said uh, I know more than one Republican said this that that the a, a poor family owning a refrigerator and an air conditioning is considered a luxury yeah. that they 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 yeah. don't deserve. Yeah. Well, I guess now they want poor people not, not to be able to eat steak and seafood. And what's next? Well, they next? don't want them to eat good food, uh, that's for certain. But the problem is these same people who do these things and want to do these things against the poor usually call themselves good Christians and etc. etc. Now, you know what the Bible says about a good Christian. He is supposed to give his two coats to the poor and invite the poor to meet yes. at his table. Well, you could be sure that these wealthy Republicans are living high on the hog, them and their whole families, but um, they, they feel that the poor 
should not be able to they I guess they feel steak and seafood is too much of a luxury for the poor to, to buy with food stamps and uh, what I uh, uh, what I say is make these rich career politicians in Washington in the Senate and the Congress make them pay for their own health insurance and retirement they can afford it and they're eating in the dining room they get elsewhere. free food in, in the dining room yeah free food uh, free uh, even donuts and coffee and pastries are taxpayer funded you know but you see punishing them does no good because they are out of their minds well uh, uh, it would and save, they get away with it it would save tax dollars in a smart way when you take somebody who's a public servant and you may and you and you make them a, a real true public servant well, by paying them less than this hundred and seventy five thousand a year or if if they if, if you can't do that if you can't make them take a pay cut give a, a freeze their pay and make them pay for their own retirement and health insurance they could do it well you can do any of those things but the point of it is uh, as I keep saying you have to change the system but you're not being real unless you go to where the money's going and that's the military so if you're going to start cutting yeah that's where you cut first you mean like a uh, trillion spent uh, on the Lockheed Martin plane that is not that is not the used 35 that is never used. Never will be used. And never will be used. Because it was a job program and making contractors rich. That's all that stuff is from the Pentagon. Well, well, what was mostly. that plane? That, that plane that was never used under uh, during Reagan, the B two bomber. B two, correct. Was it the B two bomber? What about Vietnam? They were using the B uh, what you call it? Those big guys. B fifty two. B fifty twos from World War Two. Come were, on. They were drop old fashioned bombing. Yeah. Dropping tons. Yeah. Yeah, but but now you have to have these smart weapons that and but 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 to spend forget about trillions to spend billions or millions on a weapon that will never see action compared to that taking that waste of money waste of tax dollars and putting it to something that we need something useful like uh, roads and infrastructure structure bridges uh, uh feeding the homeless taking you know taking care of the veterans <clears throat> health care but the contractors give campaign moolah so you here see? we we're back to the old-fashioned political System. corruption in capitalism they're bought out that's it and i think jerry brown was bought out too for him to uh, uh, say what he said and to allow Nestle's and the frackers to continue to use up California fresh water. Okay. Anyway, it's time for the Reverend ah. Doctor. I'll take care of that later. It's time for the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and we will be joined by um, our new uh, segment of um, how to how to defeat a conservative with the biblical. Proof slideshow followed by uh, our commercial voiceover artist William H. Morrill the third. Actually, it's William Hamilton. Ah! I found out his middle name. Mil William Hamilton Morrill the third with his words of wisdom and promo. And, and we'll be back with the second half of the show. Yeah, I'll, t I'll get to that.
Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your commercial and words of wisdom. Now we return to the balance of the show. And I take it you learned something from uh, How to Defeat a Conservative a Bible Verses. All you do is hit the pause button. <coughs> And read. When folks in North Jersey think of loons, they usually picture a scenic Canadian lake and haunting calls. Woo! It's a water. Woo! It's a What's water. What's their sound like? It's a waterfowl. Woo! A loon. I don't know what they sound like. We also can see these athletic diving birds in this region. Actually two kinds of loons, the red-throated and the common. But these water birds can be tough to find because they seldom stick around. They just pass through in migration. The much larger common loons have been heading back north of late this accounts for recent sightings at the Lincoln Park Community Lake in Pompton Lake Celery Farm Natural Area in Allendale. Celery Farm. That's probably where they got the word loony from. Lake Tepang. No, no, I'm sorry. They got it from lunatic, as in the moon. And Mawa's Lake Henry. My mistake. Mawa's Lake Henry. The Allendale loon stayed only a few minutes. The two Lincoln Park loons hung out for more than a week. Lincoln Park loons. It's when the loons try to land or take off that problems result. You mean hunters? The most interesting thing about loons is their feet are so far back on their bodies that they can only take off from water. What do you mean so far? Oh, oh, their legs are positioned like almost on their ass. Ah. Says Chris Saucy, the executive director of the Raptor Trust, located south of Morristown. If they become grounded, they are essentially stuck and cannot return to the air. It's kind of like a bat having to climb up on a tree in order to take off. Bats have to fall at a, at a certain height to fly. When we get loons in their in for rehabilitation, it's almost always because they have become grounded. Several years ago, for example, a state environmental official had to assist a common loon at White's Pond in Waldwick. The problem? The pond was too small for the bird to take off. Hmm. 
the loon was coaxed into nearby Hohokus Brook, mm -hmm. where a long watery runway awaited. Having legs so far back may sound like a big drawback, but Susie says it's usually to the loon's advantage. With their strong legs set very far back on their bodies, they can swim and paddle and steer underwater with a great deal of speed and agility, which enables them to pursue their prey, primarily fish, very effectively. The loon's leg location can also affect their landings. Such was the case of a red throated loon which mistook a huge puddle for a pond in a church parking lot in Hillsdale. Kind of a kind of a rough landing, huh? On that on that hard asphalt. Donna Pontrelli of Franklin Lakes Animal Hospital picks up the story because the loon's legs were so far back on its body it had abrasions on its chest from falling forward on landing and since it couldn't take off from the puddle its feet got stuck when the water froze Tycho Animal Control brought the bird to the animal hospital, mm -hmm. which then sent it to the Raptor Trust. The bird was treated and released a few days later. A Raptor Trust Facebook post noted what a tough winter it had been for waterfowl. Among the birds that received treatment were two ruddy ducks, a black duck, one gadwall, a lesser scop, and a red-throated loon that black was frozen duck. to the ground. That's Daffy, the black duck, right? Yeah. And had to be chiseled out. Oh. Pontrelli saw the irony of it all. Here is this incredible bird with all sorts of physical attributes that enable it to fly and dive so well, yet they need a kind of human, a kind human, excuse me, if they get in trouble. Oh dear. <laughs> What do you got there? What do you got there, Chief? Uh, I got another animal him, but, but I ain't going to read that one right now because I want to break it up a little bit. Yeah. Mike Kelly's column provided a very good synopsis of the situation with United States Senator Bob Menendez, Democrat of New Jersey. Perhaps the questions that need to be answered in these cases are, if Menendez and Ferrario were carpenters or factory workers like their respective fathers, would they have been able to do the same favors in the spirit of friendship without receiving any type of compensation in return? Also, while in positions of political power, have they done the same types of favors for other constituents without receiving any benefit? The records articles about the indictment of U.S. Senator Bob Menendez outlined facts in the 14-count federal indictment and mention a constitutional clause pertaining to the case. How does the Justice Department decide whom to indict? There appears to be some question as to whether Menendez's opposition to White House policy on Iran and Cuba influenced the department to select this particular case at this time. Most people believe that congressmen and senators are influenced by donations to their election campaigns 
or by other favors extended to them. Some also react favorably to certain requests to use their influence on behalf of these donors. Some of this information is not public knowledge. But the behavior of Congress is of extreme importance. The Justice Department should be a watchdog to rein in bad behavior. Does the department select its cases without undue political pressure? Full scrutiny of donations and favors received by our representatives as well as their voting records would go a long way to reduce any abuses. It also could shed some light on the department's basis for selecting cases for prosecution. One supporter of U.S. Senator Bob Menendez was quoted as saying, others have done worse. That's a foolish argument. Menendez was charged with crimes and now he will go through a lengthy and expensive legal process. What he should do is resign immediately. Also, there are few burning issues that need to be addressed. We should get rid of political action committees, many of which lead to corruption. Limit campaign donations, donations to a checkout box on tax forms. Also, sitting elected officials should not be allowed to spend time raising funds for their party. President Obama has said we need better politics. He's wrong. We need better politicians, starting at the top. I think, I think that all politicians, no matter who they are, uh, re Democrat, Republican, or Independent, should be held accountable for their actions and uh, all should be investigated. It doesn't matter how minor or how severe and that includes people like Governor Scott Walker and, and Chris Christie of New Jersey. Every one of them should be held accountable, not only the Democrats. Well, to do that, you would need an independent agency to be able to carry that out. And you don't have one. The Justice Department is not independent. The FBI is not independent. That's why, is that CIA why? CIA is not independent. Is that why the USDA and the F FDA These are, are involved in so, so much chicanery? Yeah. Because there is nobody to oversee any of them? That's correct. No oversight. So that's like if you have, um, if you own a company and, and let's say you own a bar restaurant and you hire someone uh, in your um, loss prevention security department to spy, let's say, on the bartenders to make sure they're not stealing from you. And that spy, that loss prevention person is offered some freebies and then they turn around and steal from you then there's nobody to oversee the loss prevention security person that's overseeing the the other employees it happened in new york with that uh, that uh, that one crane the inspector gave him a you know a, a clean bill of health when the crane was crap and it fell down yeah you know, it happens all the time, I'm sure. Does columnist Bridget Harrison argue that what is fair for one is fair for others, or does she indict all similarly situated before evidence is prevented, presented? When she argues about shortfalls in the indictment, is she suggesting that it lacks merit? Or is she offering food for thought about the business-as-usual reality regarding the way our political process functions? 
Is Harrison an advocate for changing the way government works? Or does she hope to change what serves as custom and practice throughout the structure? Are large contributions expressions of thanks for past benefits and favors? Or are they to bring future advantages yet to be identified? Perhaps it is naive to suggest, but it may be a little of each expectation and gratitude. No, it's bribery. Clear and simple. Okay? Yeah. Bribery. Yeah, whether you, whether you, you get fancy and call it a subsidy, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. It's a payoff, it's a bribery, and it takes two to do the tango when it comes to that. <laughs> you know, you, you need a, a, a dishonest politician to take the bribe, but shame on you for offering the bribe to sell out the, 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 the politician who's supposed to be having the people's best interest at heart. Texas lawmakers and top business leaders vowed on Tuesday to kill two proposed constitutional amendments they say would promote anti-gay discrimination and could lead to backlash similar to recent reactions in Indiana and Arkansas. Opponents say the proposals sponsored by Republicans Representative Matt Krause and Senator Donna Campbell would morph the business-friendly Lone Star State into a costly state for corporations and negatively affect tourism. Texas Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1999 allows a Texas resident to sue the state and local governments if he or she feels that a government entity is burdening religious beliefs or practices. Mm. Lauded by gay rights advocates as carefully crafted, the act explicitly states it cannot be used to undermine federal or state civil rights or take precedence over local ordinances. The proposed amendments do not explicitly say the law cannot be used to justify discrimination based on sexual orientation, mirroring, mirroring the original language of the laws passed recently in Indiana and Arkansas that sparked boycotts and strong opposition. Those states, Republican-controlled legislatures, both revised their laws last week. Krauss said his proposed amendment would give constitutional strength to Texas's law. It would also trump local laws, including cities, non-discrimination ordinances already in place, such as Houston, Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio. Dozens of states have similar religious freedom laws, largely modeled after a federal law enacted in 1993 with broad bipartisan support. I hate that word. Texas is one of the 29 states that have no protections for gays and lesbians in non-discrimination laws. Similar debates are going on in other state houses, as Republican governors in Michigan and North Dakota are urging lawmakers to extend anti-discrimination protections for gays. Flanked by Democratic lawmakers at a news conference, Texas Association of Business CEO Bill Hammond called the GOP back measures misguided legislation. 
Dallas Democratic Representative Rafael Anchia said that as in Indiana and Arkansas, people in Texas are concerned about the economy. He predicted that a bipartisan group of legislators will stop this thing in the House. Krauss said he is confident in his proposal. He said the amendments wouldn't change the protections already in place. Yeah, they're worried about the economy in Texas. Um, from what I was told firsthand, that the uh, Border Patrol is very uh, laid back, easygoing, permissive over in. Uh, San Antonio, not San Antonio. I'm sorry. Um, um, by the by, the uh, El, El Paso Juarez border, because every week multitudes of Mexican families drive into Texas to go shopping in the United States, to go to the malls and department stores, and 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 then they drive back with their with their merchandise, mm -hmm. and it, it's a, a good for the economy of Texas in that region but also what else, what else is amazing is these Mexicans that drive over the border uh, seem to have the money to buy products in the United States so what I was told was not all of Mexico is destitute and poor well there are 35 families who supposedly own everything <laughs> yeah so, I mean, there are lots of families that just load up their vehicles and shop and go back. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, when, when it's convenient for America's wealthy, whether they be conservative or not, you know, let's say they're conservative and they're bigoted as usual. Um, they don't have a problem with immigrants of color if there's money to be made. Yeah. Or if they can exploit them for cheap pay. Yeah. They don't have a problem with their skin color. With, no, 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 no. With no, no, no. them coming into the United States. But if they're not exploiting them and they're not making money off of them, then they have a problem. Uh, yeah. So hypocrisy is... <clears throat> if you had to sum up conservatives with one word, I would say it, w it would be hypocrisy. Well, I would say evil. Well, they they are downright evil. They're evil. Hypocr so all of these hypocrisy is an evil thing. Righteous, self righteousness is an evil thing. Well, selfishness out of as a virtue. These are all evil. Hypocrisy is sort of tied into lying. When you think you know? about it. hypocrisy, well, it is a lie. You're living a lie. You're living a lie. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. You're 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 bearing false witness yeah. to your neighbor, right? Yeah. Phony baloney. But you are phony Malone. You're not practicing what you're preaching. But they get away with it because no one comes around and points it out. And no, and if anybody points it out, the U.S. media doesn't give equal face time. That's correct, because then they say you're attacking their religion. You're attacking you're their re, their cult. Yeah, their. Yeah, you're a hater. What about what about Christians that really adhere to the Bible, aren't they attacking real Christians? Uh, no, they don't. They will point it up to their own, but they don't really go out of their way. In other words, I know of a, I know of a, a biblical sect. Yeah. And when they use clients and attribute things to certain people, it's always from the right wing. It's always Fox News. It's always the right wing. So they too have a bias. You know, they got to be careful. Yeah, got to be careful. I hear that. Um well, I mean, I, 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 I read um, a very um, 
emotional uh, chat thread, if you want to call it that, on Facebook, where uh, African Americans were talking about the racism within their own race with 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 blacks of different shades of color. Oh yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Lighter versus brown skin mm -hmm. versus dark, darker. You know what I mean? There's this, it happens all the time. Oh. This 2016 presidential campaign is going to be an endless supply of comedy material for for everyone because of the characters that are running for president. You remember that Florida pastor who burned the Quran? He's running. That goofball with the Yosemite Sam. Yep. What is it like handlebar Most mustache? Yeah. He's running for president. He. Want, he was told not to do it, but he publicly barbecued the Quran on, on church grounds, Baptist church, I think. Yeah. And caused a lot of trouble, of course, you know, I mean, these are, these zealots think they have a bat phone to God. They're dangerous. Yeah. They, they, They've been dangerous in history and it's still dangerous. Well, first of all, you know they don't have a bat phone to God. And second of all, no religion has ever been proven. So why is it relevant to to combine religion or cults with politics? It, it should never strength of the nation. Why do you think Constantine did it? Okay. Well, it enforces what the fascism, the fa the fascist well, form of government. It, it enforces whoever's on the top. They're going to remain on the top. What about They're all those? They're going to tell you what to do. You, you, you appreciated that one article about all the quotes from the founding fathers of the United States are, are quotes that right-wing conservatives would not like to hear. Would never use, yeah. And they definitely were very specific about combining church and state. And, of course, and because they looked at history and saw all the trouble that it's made when you do that. It's not. America, according to the Founding Fathers, was not, is not a Christian nation. These, no. these zealot nuts want, want to make it a Christian nation. Uh, their Christianity, again. Their Christianity. Their Christianity is not biblical. Yeah. Well, this, 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 uh, this right-wing goof... Their Christianity is yeah. of their traditions. Now, th this right-wing goofball, instead of putting, instead of posting what he was telling me in private on the group, he was trying to convince me and show me Bible verses that a hell, similar to a Dante's Inferno, exists where he mentioned a verse about the worm does is not consumed by the flames, something like a description of, of a hell. Are you familiar with this? Yes, I am. The thing of it is, these things that he's talking about, obviously you have to resort to an immortal soul. And if you have an immortal soul, you need no resurrection. And all through the Bible, yeah. there is a promise of a resurrection. Right. So how can you have that contradiction? Yeah. So, working so, so maybe in your that brain? maybe that verse about the worm is not consumed by the torment of the flames. Maybe it refers to the lake of fire. The lake of fire burns the wicked up into stubble. Oh, but and this blows away. But this ver these verses that he threw out. He's giving you an interpretation of them. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't listen to that. Right. You listen what the Bible says. Right. There is a verse in the Bible concerning the Trinity. It is a fraud. It is a forgery. You got to watch. Yeah. You got to, in that particular verse, you have to go. I'm not sure if it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament, but whatever it is, you have to go back to the original, either Greek or Hebrew, and see what word they are translating hell from. Could be the grave. H Hades, the grave. In the Greek, that's what the word is that they yeah. translate hell from. And of course, when Jesus was resurrected, he was resurrected bodily, physically. He left the tomb physically, yeah. 
There was no immortal soul or spirit that flew out of his body, corpse. No, he was around 40 days, hanging around in a bodily form. He hadn't yet got up to heaven to be glorified. Right, he was in a bodily form at that time. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's but Jesus is a special case. Yeah. Because Jesus was a god before he became right. a human. Well, he was born, he was born without sin. But Jesus. what does that have to do with being a god? I just made the statement, that's all. Well, don't make that kind of a statement. You're changing the subject. He was a God. V John 1, verse 1. What the In the beginning what? was the Word, and the Word was what with the God, fuck are you, and the Word was what God. What the fuck are you yelling at me for? What does this have, what does this have to do with anything? Because you changed anything? the subject. I hear you. I told you a very profound statement. What do you want me to do? God. I'm listening to you. You're being recorded. I hear you. But you changed the subject. All right. I know. He was the Jesus wo was a He was God. the word. You see you see what religion does to everybody? Makes them f turn into That's not religion. Makes them ferocious. That's not religion. That's a statement of biblical fact. Well, what the hell Jesus. you want me to do? It's a statement or why do you have to scream for? I'm being emphatic. No, you're yelling at me. You're looking right at me. Yelling and you're does yelling. not mean yelling. All right, he was the Logos. You are yelling he, he now. He was the Word. Oh, oh, if you yell, it's fine. If I yell, oh, I'm being a meanie. I didn't say anything like that. I don't mind you yelling. What do you want me to do? He was, he was, he was the Logos. The he was the Word, Melchizedek, uh, uh, turned into a flesh and blood form. He was a, a God turned into a human form. I know yeah. that. That's a no-brainer. Well, what does that have to do with what you said afterwards? See, nothing. But this the, is a profound truth that is not understood. With the, with the, I, I, as long as what I said Christian. was a fact, now if I was saying, uh, if, I was, if I was giving you misinformation... I don't know if it was a fact, because I don't even remember what the hell you said. All I know is it changed the subject. All right, what about the... the um, I said Jesus was a special case. Right. That's why he was still around here, walking around 40 days with the apostles after he was resurrected. Right. See, he had fur, he had more work to do after the the death, the sacrifice. But he was in human form. But right. he was also his God stuff was there. Well, when he walked on the earth, he uh, the fact that he performed miracles was proof that his God stuff was there. He did not produce anything of himself. The Father did it all through him. But you just he told did me... not say he did it. He, the spirit that became Jesus, was the... Melchizedek was the Logos, the Word. So why does he need... What does that why, did, why, did, why did all his powers have to come from God? If God that's where they came and from. the Word are equal. He was human at this time. Equal deities. Get this through your head. He was human. So he needed he needed assistance at that time. That's correct. Because he, he told the apostles any number of times, if you have the faith, you could move that mountain over there. All right. I hear you. All right. Uh, if you want to talk to the folks more about it, you can. I have to go to the restroom. But, you know, continue the reading. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, people. I got to go. I am the mother of an 18-year-old daughter. Her dad and I are divorced, and she lives with him. We were married 20 years, and I know he's a good parent, except for one thing. My daughter has told me her father and his partner sometimes engage in very loud lovemaking when she's in her room, and it embarrasses her. She's shy to begin with, so she hasn't said anything to him. I feel angry and frustrated because I don't know if I should say something to him about it. I have suggested she put on some loud music or use headphones if she can't bring this up with him. 
I think she wants me to intercede, but I don't feel it's my business to do so. Can these adults be that clueless? Please help. This is Dear, Dear Abby's uh, answer. To the loud lovemaking. Yes, adults can be that clueless. Her father and his partner may not realize how much noise they make. Headphones and turning on loud music are good suggestions, but remember that clear communication is important in relationships, both personal and professional. At 18, your daughter is old enough to start speaking up for herself. Encourage her to talk about this problem privately with her father. But if she can't, then you should handle this for her. Well, you know, it's it had to do with uh, other people hearing sexual intercourse, the sounds of sexual intercourse. Of daddy and his partner. A, a, a person can get laid and not have to scream and wail and moan so loudly unless the walls are like paper thin and it, you know and it's really there's no sound insulation at all it, you know it's it could be difficult to muffle but you don't have to scream like you're making a porno movie you know it, 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 what if this is part of their scene oh they're fucking assholes then they got to be considerate of others or that might be hearing them. They are being emphatic. No, they're douche. They're being douchebags. They're being the douchebags. You know. You know, like like a, like a, the obscene uh, artist. What was his name? Maplethorpe. Maple. Maplethorpe that put the uh, crucifix in the jar of urine. He, he he had to show his creativity and be offensive all at the same time. And, and disrespect a, a, a religion. So anyway. Why is that offensive? Putting putting the crucifix in urine is a, a very disrespectful gesture of Jesus. He didn't put a tree in the urine with Jesus hanging on a tree as the Bible says. Well he put an image of Jesus being crucified in the urine. On a crucifix. In the urine, a yeah. cross, which he was not. See what you're doing here. I, I, I know you're an artist. I know. You're goddamn right, I'm an artist. I know you know how. And it's, freedom of expression how eccentric, will be protected. How eccentric uh, artists can be, and uh, you know, the, it's fine to be an independent, critical, free thinker and express yourself. But a person can also be an obnoxious asshole prick. But you didn't say that. You said you know. he offended a religion. He did not. Because the cross is not part of the Christian religion. Well, the, the Jesus on the cross he is was definitely on a, tree. a symbol. He was hung on a tree. No, you, you're ju you just feel that people, not a cross. people need to blatantly do their thing and that's it. And if some, you know, well, I mean, they also don't have to have people going around blaming them for doing something they did not do. That that makes sense. Okay. Now, if somebody, uh, if somebody's woman is a screamer when she's getting banged, porked, uh, uh, it is possible for her to have an orgasm and keep it down. That is quite possible. You know what I mean? So anyway. <clears throat> I have to put a little uh, up front here in there because I don't have the other part of this article. But it seems, <clears throat> excuse me, that a wild turkey has been roaming the Cloister Supermarket's parking lot. <laughs> Mascot. We have them right here in town, by us. Well, Washington Township a few years ago had Eileen, I believe. She had something wrong with her leg, and she was uh, hanging around on the corner and everything. There's coyote in our town, too. 
believe it or not. I found out, yeah. So anyway, wild birds are protected by the state. Hunting and animal cruelty laws apply, but such friendly and prolonged human interactions with wildlife are another matter. In the case of Tom Tom, that's what they've named the turkey, the State Department of Environmental Protection is issuing a firm reminder that you're not supposed to feed wildlife. That's true. People go into the A&P and they, they uh, or the shopping market, whatever it is there, and they buy corn and grain, and then they come out and they feed a turkey. Well, a turkey, a turkey is not like feeding, trying to feed a coyote or a black bear. I mean, it's a bird. Well, I mean, they don't want you to do it. They don't want you to <coughs> do it. Excuse me. Uh, um, but they're they're very likable, you know. It's like feeding a bunny rabbit. They're they're, they're very pleasant, likable animals. So anyway, there's no now, danger, is what I'm saying. Nice he may be, but the D A D E P would prefer that people keep their distance from the large bird. They don't want a whole menagerie of turkeys sticking around because they the birds will get used to this and. Uh, they will be moochers like the pelicans. Yeah, yeah, my my okay. conservative aunt called pelicans landing at the marina in Florida uh, moochers, freeloaders. Uh, keep their distance from the large birds strutting fearlessly through the parking lot and sometimes out onto Demarest Avenue. Well, we have tons of Canadian geese here in town where he is known to have caused traffic jams that have nothing to do with cranberries. <laughs> Turkeys can start getting aggressive. When they get used to people, they lose their fear and they can attack a person. They've been known to go after cars, to peck at tires and at people, and there's a risk of an accident. We know he's there. And if we feel he's in danger, or if he shows signs of aggression, officers from the Fish and Wildlife Division may go and remove him to a wildlife preserve. They're, um, they're very beautiful, the male turkey, with the, when, they, when they puff up and their plume opens up. <clears throat> Even though state conservation law bans the feeding of all wildlife, including Tom Tom, and even technically, the goldfinches, cardinals, and other birds that gather at your backyard feeders. Why do you think the wild mallard ducks don't leave over here by the creek or the brook, whatever you want to call it? They don't leave because people, these goofballs are on here, keep on feeding it, feeding them. Of course, they, they, these people are totally brain dead assholes that they're feeding them white white bread that they should not even be eating but nevertheless the birds get used to it uh, some wild birds are actually uh, they use intelligence they they hang around fast food uh, parking lots around New Jersey <coughs> seagulls that they're, they're there oh, waiting yeah. for somebody to drop french little, fries little or fairy, huh? uh, yeah on, on the lot on the there is no state mandated penalty for feeding anything except bears. Yeah, that's a problem. In Eileen's case, that's the other turkey I mentioned, the community's total acceptance resumed after she was returned to her customary corner. Since then, her legend dissolves into uncertainty and maybe even a happy ending. Ruth Carino, a township resident, former veterinary technician who regularly fed Eileen, said, last time I saw her two years ago, she was with a male turkey. Someone said they saw her with a chick. Yeah, you, could, you could tell the male from female in the bird family instantly. But then I don't know. Somebody else told me they saw a woman in a van near her. 
I don't know if somebody took her. I was told it might have been an animal control. I, I, I'm not really sure. I still look for her. As for Tom Tom, the offerings of breadcrumbs, bird seed, and corn left by shoppers in small piles in the parking lot haven't ruffled the feathers of any local law enforcement authorities. So the romance between humans and bird continues. I love him! Oh, brother. Said Katie Dennis of Riverdale. Katie's a nut. Who sees Tom Tom often when she parks her car in the lot to start her daily commute to public transportation into New York City. I want to adopt him! Here we go, people treating animals like they were children. But Dennis said she was very worried about Tom's welfare because he goes out into the middle of the road all the time. He could get hit by a car. Yeah, they're not the brightest animals. Bill Hurley, Hurley, a local contractor, said he had been seeing the large turkey in the parking lot for three or four months. He's docile. He doesn't bother anybody. He doesn't travel very far, and he's all alone. He's not part of a flock. He's solo. He's not injured, is he? Asked Christine Howell a visitor from Rockland County. Her brow furrowed with concern as she looked carefully at the turkey sitting and preening its brown, black, and white feathers on the lot's cold asphalt. No, no, he, Hurley uh, assured her, he's fine. He'll get fed. Oh, yes. People feed him all the time. I'm scared to get run over," said Carol Zucchino of Closter. Carol, Carol Zucchini? Zucchino. Zucchino. I think animal control should come and get him and take him to Van Son or some place where he'll be safe. Margaret Cooper of Haworth said she had seen Tom Tom often but never like that, she said gesturing toward the bird sitting on the paper. I'm wondering if he's been hit. A short time later, the turkey, motivated by inclinations unknown and unknowable to more humans, arose and took a few steps on its impressively clawed feet, then tucked its right leg up into its lavish plumage, and stood for a while on one leg, casually watching cars and a large delivery truck wend their ways around him. People go into the A&P and buy things for him, Cooper said. I saw someone buy a bag of frozen corn and put it out. Jeez. What the hell frozen corn? What idiots. And Tom Tom returns the simpatico relation, albeit in his stolid, wild, turkey way. Indeed, he appeared completely indifferent as a man drove slowly by in a luxury sedan. Is it almost finished? Lowered his window and advised the good-naturedly, Hey! Use the crossing lane! And they expect all this compliance from a turkey. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Why well, the, they are beautiful birds, you know, the, the males. Anyway. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, founding father with the electricity. Thomas Edison? Oh my God. Tesla. Founding father. Founding father of electricity. Nikola Tesla? Founding father of this nation. You said like you said the word electricity? No, I didn't. I said with electricity. Involved with electricity. 
That's what. Oh, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Flying the kite. He wanted the turkey to be our uh, national symbol instead of the eagle, the bald eagle. Well, they're both indigenous well, to, that's why to this went. part of the world, you know. and uh, they're both beautiful birds. I mean, you know. Um, well, especially when they're sitting on my table, all brown and succulent. Now you just reminded me. Okay. I have a huge package of turkey wings that I should defrost and uh, cook like a pot roast on top of the stove. Maybe I'll uh, do that. Not so much on turkey wing. The whole turkey is. Well, turkey wing, yeah. turkey wing is. Uh, eh, I would say it's like crossing the dark meat with the white meat. It's not like as white as the breast, but it's not as dark as the the leg. The drumstick, or it's actually a calf of the of the turkey, but it's good. It's good. Anyway, what do you got there? Any? Um, that's it. Heavy duty stuff. That's it. Okay. Thank you for joining us for uncensored, hard hitting truth. Uh, we'll see you next time, God willing. Um, and happy spring. And you know, I know people are starting to get their they're gardening, you know, uh, getting their, their their properties cleaned up. Landscapers are very busy, um, and people who garden, I salute you. People who uh, have victory gardens, and um, I think we need to have uh, a course in grammar school for uh, gardening, for farming small-scale organic farming husbandry yes and and that includes having having the kids actually apply hands-on practice on on gardens in schoolyards instead of wasting all that land on having a lawn they should grow food not lawns and uh, and learn this very very basic important skill and uh, donate the produce to the homeless, the soup kitchens. Uh, also, I or believe... their own free lunches. Yeah. And I also, I believe that uh, county parks, state and county parks, should have, should plant fruit trees so the homeless can go and pick fruit. So, anyway. Well, that's how it used to be. And, of course, uh, under uh, God's economics, you were allowed to go on to someone's property and uh, they were supposed to leave part of the harvest around the perimeters of their land so that the poor and the widows and everything can go there and pick the food they want. As long as they picked enough for them to eat and didn't take any away that you could go and sell. Yeah. That was okay under God's economics. Republicans would have a terrible day with that. There's they? more than enough the earth capability of producing food it is more than enough food to eradicate hunger in in in, uh, in the world um, but it's just that with this plutocracy corporate plutocracy that we have now or oligarch it's complete total selfishness and greed with capitalism so we'll see you next time This has been a Mega Life 21 production.